Well, we're back on the posterior muscles now, and so I'm going to run through all the posterior muscles uh, for you and describe them and help you understand their movements and uh, their locations a bit better. Let's start with your trapezius. We looked at this on the anterior side. You can see a little bit of it on the anterior side on the superior part of your uh, torso. Uh, but really it's a back muscle that's involved in uh, retraction of the shoulders, uh, is involved in elevation of the shoulders as well, and also depression because you have these fibers going in different directions. It's kind of a unique muscle that you got upper fibers, you got middle fibers, and you got lower fibers. Uh, but it's all your trapezius, so it's a very superficial muscle as well uh, and really involved in, in kind of this, if you're going to roll your shoulders back, you really get in the full uh, trapezius uh, flexion there, or uh, contraction I should say. Uh, the rhomboids, the rhomboids are a unique one, so you got your rhomboids minor, don't worry about that one, but your rhomboids major, it's a major uh, back uh, retractor. So if, if I'm going to uh, put my arm out straight and pull my, my shoulder, my elbow straight back, that would be my rhomboids, really uh, pure rhomboid movement right there. So uh, that's the rhomboid major. It is deep though. It's, it's, it would be hidden under your uh, trapezius there. Uh, we see the deltoid again. Uh, it, we, we talked about it on the anterior side, so I'm not going to describe it anymore. Uh, and then we have your major back uh, retractor, arm flexor, if we're going to adduct on the posterior side, uh, this is your latissimus dorsi. And your latissimus dorsi is uh, kind of that big, uh, if, you, if you have, you see like the bodybuilders with a V to them, that's the, the latissimus dorsi sticking out. So it's really involved in this uh, kind of posterior abduction and that, that, that retraction and if you're going to flex by, by doing like a pull up or a pull down, something like that motion, this is going to be your latissimus dorsi doing that work. Very wide, very large uh, muscle and it's, uh, it's pretty superficial. Uh, on the uh, deeper side, we'll move over to the rotator cuff muscles. So these are going to be involved in uh, the rotation of your shoulder. And we already looked at the uh, subscapularis, it's called an internal rotation. Uh, but a lot of these are your major uh, external rotators. So you've got your supraspinatus right here. You've got your infraspinatus. And you've got your teres minor. So those three combined make up the uh, external rotation of your rotator cuff muscles. The whole group involves your supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and your subscapularis. So all four of those combined are, is your rotator cuff group. Uh, but the supraspinatus, it's, it's superior uh, to the uh, spinous process of your scapula, so uh, that's why it's called supraspinatus, and then infraspinatus is inferior to that uh, aspect of your scapula. And then you have your teres minor. And if you ever have a minor, you also have a, right, a major. So uh, here's your teres major, just uh, a little bit inferior to your teres minor. It's not involved in external rotation. It's really involved in that um, arm uh, flexion with this motion right here. Uh, it's a little bit involved in that, that posterior adduction, but uh, really involved in that, that movement, which is, which is arm flexion. So teres minor, is involved in that external rotation along with your infraspinatus and supraspinatus. Uh, but the teres major is, is different. It's really going to be involved in that, in that flexion, not in any kind of rotation. And then you have your uh, erector uh, spinae. And it's really three muscles, but if you put them all together, it's your erector spinae group. And it's really your major back extender. It's going to be the extender of your spine. So when you have like lower back issues, um, or, or you just simply are, are doing uh, this motion here where you're extending at the spine, that is your erector spinae. That's really that, that cause. And um, I always tell uh, my grade nine boys, everyone wants to work their abs. Everybody forgets about this erector spinae muscle. And you gotta work both, holding a plank, you're, you're contracting that erector spinae, doing a Superman movement, you're doing that erector spinae. So make sure you uh, involve that in your workouts as well. Prevents a lot of injury later on. 
Okay, moving to the arm, uh, on, the, on the posterior side of your upper arm, you have your triceps break. Yeah, triceps, you've got three heads, um, try three. But uh, it's really your major uh, extender at the elbow, all right? Your extender at the elbow is your triceps. And if you flex your, if you extend at the elbow and you can feel the triceps, uh, sometimes you can feel all three of those, those heads. But really, uh, that, that extender at the elbow is your triceps breaking out. Uh, and then on your forearm, you have the uh, deep wrist finger extensors. There's a lot of them. They have very complicated names. Look them up on your own for fun. Uh, but really, that extension at the at the forearm is your um, is your deep wrist and finger extensors. Uh, and then we get into your glutes, your gluteal group, uh, and and this is uh, not an upper body; it's a lower body muscle, of course. And uh, they're really involved uh, with your uh, hip extension, okay? So your hip extension is your gluteal group, and then the hip uh, flexion is your iliopsis, if you remember from the anterior side. And really, your gluteus maximus, you know, we've probably heard that term before, but your gluteus maximus is that large uh, muscle in your seat, and uh, you, you have the ability to extend at the hip uh, primarily because of your gluteus maximus. Uh, the gluteus uh, medius has actually a, uh, a bit of a, a different uh, movement to it. So your gluteus medius is just a little bit superior and uh, it's a much smaller muscle, but you can, uh, you're gonna use it mainly for, uh, for, for abduction at the hip. So when you are abducting along with your tensor fascia lata, you are also using that, uh, that, uh, that gluteus medius uh, in, a, in a very real way. Okay, uh, a few others here. Uh, these are some repeats. So we got your IT band here. Uh, we've got your adductor magnus uh, poking through on the posterior side. Um, and then the vastus lateralis is poking through. It's really an anterior uh, quadriceps group muscle. Uh, but here's what we really want to get to in this upper leg portion is your hamstring group. So your quadriceps an uh, anterior, your hamstrings posterior. So it's really going to be involved in leg uh, flexion, flexion at the knee. So when I flex at the knee, I am going to be involved in using, contracting my hamstring group. So the hamstring group consists of three muscles, three primary muscles, and that is your uh, biceps femoris right here, your semitendinosus, and then your semimembranosus. It kind of is deep, so it kind of pokes out on, on the different sides here, and you can really see it on, the, on, the, on this deep portion here. So your, your biceps femoris is kind of your prime one. Remember you had a rectus femoris with your quadriceps, but biceps femoris here. By the way, when you say biceps on any anatomy test, don't leave it at biceps. What are you talking about? Your biceps brachii or are you talking about your biceps femoris? So make sure you make that distinction on any future test. Um, the the semimembranosus, you just got to remember, it's a little bit uh, deep. To your semitendinosus. So uh, if you really look at it, sometimes it is simply, uh, it's, it's a little bit more medial uh, than your semitendinosus, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, a little more lateral, but uh, it's really a deeper muscle. So those are uh, the three hamstring group muscles. Biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus. And then finally, on the lower leg, you have your uh, prime plantar flexors. You have your gastrocnemius. That's the more superficial muscle, uh, really what we call your calf muscle. Um, uh, and with your gastrocnemius and your soleus, you can combine them to call your calves. Uh, the gastrocnemius is the major one. It's got two large heads there. And it is going to uh, articulate to your calcaneus uh, bone and then all the way up to your femur. And uh, it is really involved in being contracted, involved in that plantar flexion. A very powerful uh, muscle to use when you jump 
um, especially getting that last little bit of movement off your toes. So gastric nemius is really involved in the, hold on a second, plantar flexion, gastric nemius. Your soleus does the same thing, so your soleus, your soleus muscle has a, uh, a deeper um, uh, placement in your body, but it is it's essentially doing the same uh, work, the same movement of plantar flexion. And then uh, I just left this here. It's not a muscle, it's a tendon, but everyone's probably heard of your Achilles heel or your Achilles tendon. And it is uh, articulating from your, uh, from your gastric nemius down to your uh, calcaneus bone. And it is the, uh, uh, you know, it's a major, probably the most major tendon in your body. And, and it's really a, uh, a prime uh, connector point uh, the prime connector point for your gastric nemius uh, muscle there. So those are the posterior muscles. Use them as you memorize them. Uh, use your kinesthetic learning along with your visual, uh, along with your auditory, and uh, get to know those muscles really well. Thanks for listening.